Hello, Jen again here. Uh, I want to speak a little more about BDNF and increasing levels of BDNF in the brain naturally. So came across three different studies this weekend uh, that I found pretty interesting that I thought I'd share here. Um, study number one looked at basically green tea, ginkgo biloba, and blueberries and the effect on increasing BDNF levels specific to the region of the brain called the hippocampus. So why is this really interesting, Jen? Let me tell you. Um, so it was thought that it's the flavonoid content in these substances um, that crosses the blood-brain barrier and kind of turns on the expression of BDNF, meaning increasing um, cell growth and regeneration and repair. Possibly, that sounds like a great idea. Um, also, you must know that there are 6,000 kinds of flavonoids known right now, probably more. Um, so we're we're kind of saying something very broad, which is which is great that we're on the on the hunt for what which substances are increasing BDNF. There are probably six thousand reasons to consume flavonoids in general. So if you weren't swayed by the fact that they are anti-carcinogenic, meaning they help prevent cancer, antioxidants, they help mop up cell death and damage, um, then you know, hey, they raise BDNF levels. So blueberries, green tea. Um, and uh, ginkgo biloba. And like I said, specific to the hippocampus region of the brain. Now this is the region of the brain that is most affected by um, chronic uh, PTSD, HPA axis dysregulation. We see shrinkage in this region of the brain. So here you have um, three substances that will actually turn on the expression of BDNF in that region and help improve memory and cognition. So there you go, that's study one. Study two uh, looked at two-laying honey and estrogen and its effect on BDNF and HPA axis dysregulation and regulation. So two-laying honey is a form of honey that uh, the bees in Malaysia, specifically in the two-laying trees, uh, produce. It has a huge number of medicinal properties to it. Um, it also has a fairly intense uh, flavonoid content. So is it the flavonoids? Maybe it is. Or possibly this study thought it might be the mildly phytoestrogenic properties of the Tulang honey um, because it compared it to estrogen and we do think or suspect I should say that uh, the E2 receptors in the brain may be partially responsible for also turning on BDNF. So we don't know exactly what it was but we Again, Tulang honey um, and estrogen both reverse damage to the HPA axis and increase BDNF levels. Pretty cool study there. Third study that I looked at, uh, curcuma longa. So moving to another part of the world, India, subcontinent of India, where curcuma longa is consumed in the diet in large amounts, uh, aka turmeric which is this spice that, like I said, shows up in probably every Indian curry, if I'm not mistaken, in my limited experience in eating Indian foods. Uh, I've only been to India twice, but I do love Indian food. So, yes, turmeric um, basically reversed um, the destabilization of HP axis um, in, in rats chronically stressed. Uh, also re-established um, appropriate BDNF levels, raising BDNF levels in the same rats. So two reasons uh, to consume turmeric in your diet. Um, and maybe maybe branch out there and learn how to cook a couple of Indian recipes. You know, Just saying. So really interesting stuff coming out with BDNF. Uh, just scratching the surface of the of the iceberg because there's so much about BDNF that's that's being done right now um, but kind of cool another study I'll get into in a future video I don't have time to cover today had to do with uh, the brain gut axis and BDNF and actually some of the microbes in your gut affecting your brain pretty interesting um, so stay tuned if you haven't subscribed already uh, please do so and adios